It's estimated that the world's total flaring is around 140 billion cubic meters of natural gas per year. Gas flaring is essentially a problem everywhere we have oil production. The world consumes around 260 million barrels of oil equivalent today on a global basis, and around 60% of that is oil and coal. Natural gas and LNG is currently around 24%. There's plenty enough of natural gas to replace coal energy consumption in the world today, but it's taking significantly longer than what it should take. There's an increasing political focus now on banning of flare gas. It goes across the world. That obviously then impacts oil production, because if you can't flare the gas, then you also can't produce oil in a lot of places. The technology to capture the natural gas, to avoid it being polluted, has not been around. Golar was established in 1946. We have a proud maritime history. 50 years of LNG experience. I believe the real value of Golar is the entrepreneurial spirit and our engineering and operational capability. Today what Golar is doing is taking an existing ship, which has come more or less to end of life. We upgrade that ship, doubling the size, replacing some of the steel needed, and then recycle a ship that would otherwise be non-commercialized. And by converting a ship into an FLNG, saves around 30% of carbon footprint as opposed to building the whole plant from scratch. FLNG is very simply a floating liquefaction factory. So you have natural gas coming out of the ground through a pipeline. It then enters our ship where it's treated. We remove CO2, we cool it down to minus 162 degrees, where it shrinks 600 times and becomes liquid and therefore economical to transport over distances. The advantages of an FLNG is that you can produce the gas straight over the wellhead. So it's minimum interruption to the seabed and the environment. The second advantage is through our technology, we're proud to have one of the lowest carbon footprint per ton of LNG produced, even compared to shore-based liquefaction plants. Part of the reason is because we cool down pumping seawater through the cooling system. And lastly, we then also reduce the amount of transportation needed from the production site to end users, which is another environmental benefit. One significant uh, credential in terms of sustainability is the circular economy. We uh, convert already existing vessels. Compared to uh, if we were building it from scratch, a new building, we're probably reducing CO2 emissions by around 63,000 tons just by not using new steel. So we're using the existing uh, carrier to convert into an FLNG vessel. In addition to that, one of the initiatives we have out on Hindley, for example, is waste heat recovery system, where we have processes offshore and we regenerate or take the energy and convert into power, for instance. That will uh, reduce the emissions because we're not then using fuel gas for providing that energy. Basically, free energy from the uh, engines we have out on Hilly. Hilly has operated in Cameroon uh, since 2018. It's currently the best performing FLNG in the world. It was the first FLNG in the world to reach uh, 100 offloadings, which it reached on October 16th, 23. Cameroon was not a gas exporting country until we started operating. They now are, so they obviously utilize their natural resource. It's significant tax income for the region. Uh, we have 42% local content, so 42% of our staff on board are Cameroonians. We also commit to significant local purchasing of all equipment we can purchase locally. We contribute to significant training of maritime staff and we are also involved in social contribution projects in country. Africa has a lot of resources. We have abundant reserve of oil and gas. We need to get the right uh, mechanisms in, in place to ensure that we, we benefit in the long term on our resources. Aid is good, but it's not sufficient. It's a short-term solution. It doesn't really resolve the root cause on the development and poverty. So we need to make sure that we put in place the right tools to have this transfer of competencies, of knowledge to local Cameroonians so that they can be able to lead on, on the project that they are taking place in their country. We want to contribute to local development, employment, 
and help the be close to the community we are working with. Actually, we have the, our main focus area uh, health, education, and energy. Oh, I am uh, Mr. Njaba Ndete Gislen. I'm the founder and director of uh, AIMS Kribish and also the ILO Trainer of Trainer uh, Certified Instructor in Semak region. As far as the benefits is concerned, they have all the competences that are required by the Kribi Container Terminal, the Kribi Multipurpose Terminal, where they are envisaged to be employed because these terminals are operating on an international standard and they also require international standard training in order to gain the employment. So thanks to this training, they are now well equipped with the prerequisite knowledge to get access into the industry. Well, I contribute to my own education by adding to my own knowledge another knowledge. And now Gola permit me to be another concurrent of all the society who are in the place. Offshore gas extraction is not only about the circular economy, it's about creating hope. It's about developing skill sets, generating or creating jobs that's empowering people, creating value streams into the government and into Cameroon. When it comes to Golar, there is some values that align very strongly with how I feel about the world. Golar is trying to take part in energy evolution to develop a proven source of energy that enables the world to continue to facilitate a growing energy demand, to see more people out of poverty and into the industrialized world in a way where we stop flaring, we reduce pollution, and we enable more people access to cheaper and cleaner energy. It's a sustainable way of moving the world forward whilst reducing the overall footprint.